Victoria is the capital city of British Columbia, located on the southern tip of Vancouver Island off Canada's Pacific coast. The population of the city proper is around 91,000, and the greater Victoria area has a population of close to 400,000 people. Victoria is also the seventh highest population density in Canada. The city, which was named after Queen Victoria, is one of the oldest in the Pacific Northwest, with the British settlement dating back to 1843. And unlike most North American cities, the city has kept many of its historic buildings, including its two most famous landmarks, the Parliament Buildings and the Empress Hotel. Not only is Victoria a historically significant city, but it's also home to a diverse range of cultures. Like, did you know it has the second oldest Chinatown in North America, only behind San Francisco? Make sure you like and subscribe, and let's talk about Victoria. Prior to the arrival of these European navigators in the late 1700s, the Victoria area was home to several Coast Salish communities. European adventurers would come close to Victoria on numerous occasions, but the actual first European to set foot in the Victoria area was in 1790. The first settlement in Victoria began as a trading post, because in 1841, most countries were still in an imperialistic mindset, trying to expand their empire. And the United States was no exception. You see, the Oregon boundary dispute, also known as the Oregon Question was a 19th century territorial dispute over the political division of North America's Pacific Northwest between several nations with competing territorial and commercial interests in the region. This included not only Americans but also Russians. Keep in mind that at the time, British Columbia was under the jurisdiction of Rupert's Land and Fort Vancouver, believe it or not, was already an existing trading post. With all of this mystery and potential US annexation talks, the British decided to establish a trading post on the southern tip of Vancouver. Vancouver Island. This was done by James Douglas. And you see, the reasoning behind this trading post, well, is that it could serve as a backup fort if the Americans ever took Fort Vancouver. And it worked out pretty well for the British. You see, Douglas established Fort Victoria on the site of present-day Victoria in anticipation of the outcome of the Oregon Treaty in 1846 which extended the British North America slash United States border along the 49th parallel from the Rockies to the Strait of Georgia. Built in 1843 as a trading post for the Hudson's Bay Company on what was originally known as Camel Sack, which means Rush of Water, the settlement was briefly known as Fort Albert for being renamed Fort Victoria in honor of Queen Victoria in November 1843. Victoria would remain a small community though of less than a thousand people until gold was discovered. And when the news reached San Francisco in 1858, well let's just say Victoria grew pretty quickly from a population of 300 to over 5,000 in a few days. You see, Victoria was a port, supply base, and outfitting center for miners on their way to the Fraser Canyon Goldfields. Over 30,000 gold miners passed through Victoria in just two months on their way to the Fraser Valley. Miners needing a mining license from Victoria before heading to the mainland. Many came from the United States where they had taken part in the 1848 California gold rush, but others came from all over the continent and Europe. This influx of people aided its incorporation as a city in 1862. Not only was Victoria a great place for miners, but the Port of Victoria also became one of North America's largest opium importers in the latter half of the 19th century. It served as the Hong Kong opium trade and distribution into North America. The opium trade had been legal and unregulated until 1865 when the legislature issued licenses and imposed duties on its import and sale. The opium trade would not be prohibited until 1908. However, things would begin to calm down. With the completion of the Canadian Pacific Railway terminus on Bird Inlet in 1886, Victoria's position as British Columbia's commercial center was irreversibly lost to the city of Vancouver. As a result of cultivating an image of genteel civility within its natural setting, the city was able to adapt and thrive. This was aided by impressions of visitors such as Rudyard Kipling, the opening of the popular Butchard Gardens in 1904, and the Canadian Pacific Railway construction of the Empress Hotel in 1908. This marked the beginning of a massive real estate boom. However, this real estate and development boom came to an end shortly before World War I, leaving Victoria with a large stock of Edwardian public, commercial, and residential buildings that have greatly contributed to the city's character. Victoria's important 
importance as a commercial entity gradually decline, but this gave rise to a more traditional capital city economy. You see, their economy is now primarily based on government functions and tourism. Victoria is a major tourism destination, attracting over 3.5 million overnight visitors each year, who contribute more than a billion dollars to the local economy. The city is home to Canada's Western Naval Base, as well as a significant fishing fleet, along with marine, forestry, and agricultural research. The area's largest industries now include a thriving information technology sector, with annual revenues exceeding $4 billion. The University of Victoria, Camelson College, and Royal Royds University are among the educational institutions in Victoria. Victoria is also known as the Garden City for good reasons. Its most popular garden attraction is undoubtedly the world-class Butchard Gardens. It was founded in 1904 by the wife of a prominent cement manufacturer in nearby Brentwood Bay. The beautiful garden features Japanese and Italian gardens as well as an annual flower count which goes on every February. The gardens and the Butchard residence have been designated as a Canadian National Historic Site. Victoria is visually stunning from a geographical standpoint. The southeastern coast of Vancouver Island is highly irregular, with natural deep harbors and a jumble of peninsulas. It's shielded from the open Pacific Ocean's direct storms and high seas, which have proven to be a significant advantage for Victoria's settlement and development over time. And as the city grows, I'm sure it'll only become more appealing. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.